All right. Great. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is our fourth in series uh, hosted by Grant County Democrats called How Does Grant County Work? And this is an educational series like a TED Talk uh, that, that hopefully will help educate us to become better voters, better citizens, and more aware of what goes on in the county. So the topic we chose tonight is law enforcement. And I know I, for one, don't know a lot about law enforcement, how the different agencies work together, et cetera. We invited all the branches, the local branches, of law enforcement. And we may or may not have people drop in. I'm not sure. But our guest, and I'll call him up right now, is it Polly? Uh, Polly. Of course I got it wrong. We have Chaplain Tim Polly, and he works for the Grant County Sheriff's Office. Now, who knew we had a chaplain? in the sheriff's office. Ta-da! I know, I did. Okay, we got a couple people. I didn't know that. So I'm going to turn it over to Tim. All right. Welcome. All right. And I'm glad you're here. Glad to be here. And tell us a little bit about what you do, and we'll ask you questions as we go. Okay, well, on behalf of uh, Sheriff Maines, uh, thank you for having me and, and, and us tonight to uh, give a little information about uh, law enforcement. Uh, Specifically, what I'm talking about is law enforcement chaplaincy, police chaplaincy. Does anybody have any kind of idea what a police chaplain does? Yes, sir. I'd say it would be similar to a chaplain in the military where you counsel, mm -hmm. uh, counsel the officers whenever they have a tragedy or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they have a problem, they can come to the chaplain and, and discuss what the problems might be mm -hmm. and uh, help get a resolution. I would just make sure that wasn't my car. And that's, and that's, uh, that's very correct. What a police chaplain does is basically I'm the work pastor for the sheriff's office. And I ride along with the deputies and, um, on patrol, respond to calls with them, and I just sit there and listen. And the most critical thing that a police chaplain does is listen. A lot of this and very little of this. And what, what it is, is when I sit down in that cruiser, the very first thing I tell the police officer, I said, this is your office, and anything that you tell me in this office stays in this. Because one of the most important things that a chaplain is, is somebody you can trust. Somebody that you can tell what's going on in your life and know that it will stay there. And any chaplain that is not trustworthy is useless. Okay. So that's the first thing. But I also consider myself a pastor to the community. Uh, when we respond to calls, whether it's an emergency or whatever type of call that I respond to or I get called out on, basically uh, I'm, I'm a pastor to that family if they don't have a church home, uh, if they need some information about where to seek some type of service in the county, um, or if it's, if it's a situation uh, that they're involved in and the very first thing I said if you have a church home or a pastor may I call them for you so basically if they're in a certain situation I try to alleviate some of that that pressure and also when I talk with people on a call it also uh, gives the officer or the deputy that I'm running with time to do their work and then I'm able to talk and with the other people and try to figure out what's what's going on and also you wouldn't realize it but sometimes a pastor can diffuse a situation um, especially if there's a little tension going on and I get out of the car and they see this big thing on the back of my shirt that says chaplain you know usually we can sort of calm things down look work things out so that's a lot of the things that the chaplain does um, the uh, I you know I've also uh, like I said uh, some of the people in our community may not have a pastor they may not have a church home and they uh, there's been a, a death in the family, and they'll ask me to do the funeral service. So I've done that before. Um, some of the great parts about chaplaincy is, uh, uh, since I've been a police chaplain, this is my third agency that I've chaplained. I started out as a police chaplain in Benton, Kentucky, uh, 30 miles south of Paducah. And then uh, I served a parish in Carrollton, and I was the Carrollton police chaplain until I was called to a church here in Dry Ridge, and now I'm the, the Grant County Sheriff's Chaplain. And what that means is I'm actually sworn. Uh, so I don't carry a gun, I don't have a police car, but I'm actually sworn and part of the team. I'm a volunteer. Okay. So as in Kentucky, I don't know if you know that, but I did pledge not to have any duels 
if you've ever, anybody ever taken an oath in Kentucky, so I promise not to have any, any duels. I like to call myself um, the officer's cheerleader because there are some days where it's just not a good day. There have been some calls that have been tragic um, and not everybody just smiles when a police officer gets out of the cruiser, do they? And they get a lot of guff sometimes. And we see in the news right now that you know, in, in regards to being a law enforcement officer, it's not only a very dangerous job, sometimes it's not a popular job to have. So I'm their cheerleader. And I apologize, sometimes I walk, it's the pastor in me, I apologize. Uh, but I'm the cheerleader. You know, they know to call me if they've had a bad day or if they've had a good arrest or something like that, I'll say, fine job, really good job. Um, and part of this being uh, the cheerleader uh, some of the projects um, that I've done at past agencies, in Carrollton I did uh, a Stuff the Cruiser campaign. And that's where we took the police cars to the Kroger and we filled them with groceries till that you could, couldn't hardly close the doors. And we would fill five or six police cars with groceries and those would go to the food pantry, especially when the food pantry was feeling a bit low of food. And then working with our Shop with the Cop projects, I'm sure you've all heard of that project here in Grant County. It's where uh, we get names from the uh, school resource people about kids that are not going to have a Christmas. And uh, the Sheriff's Department, the different law enforcement agencies within this county, take a certain amount of kids Christmas shopping to make sure that they, they have some presents. And that uh, when we take them shopping, there's, you know, they have to buy clothes. They have to buy things that they need before they can buy things that they want. And so it's a really great project. Um, we had it here, gosh, how long ago was it? October or so? Or uh, when did we have it here? La last October we had the uh, White Castle truck here selling hamburgers. And we're going to have them here again in August. And the thing that's great about that White Castle truck is they give us 10% of the day sales. And you guys eat White Castles till your hearts are content, and 10% of that we get to take kids Christmas shopping. So it's a win-win-win. So we're going to have them back in August, I think Saturday the 21st. So if, if you're really hungering for White Castle, uh, come that day. Another project that uh, I've started since I've been with the Sheriff's Office is um, October, is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, law enforcement agencies all across the country do what's called a pink patch project. So um, uh, it's where we actually turn our patches pink. And if you saw some of our deputies last October, they were wearing pink shoulder patches. And we sell those patches and magnets, and the money that we raise goes to a designated uh, breast cancer research or treatment facility. So this time I think we gave about $800 to uh, the Grant County Cancer section here at the hospital, St. Elizabeth's. So uh, I need y'all to help me. I want to do more than that this October. We're going to sell those patches again. And we're on video. So I've talked to the sheriff about maybe getting one of our cruisers wrapped pink uh, for this project. So, so if you see a pink police car running around Grand County, that's what it's for. So if you can see, there's many things that a, a police chaplain does. Um, I have, a, I have a scanner in my car and, you know, if I feel I'm needed, I respond to a call or as needed, I'm on call 24 hours a day. Um, other agencies, if there's been a death notification, sometimes a police officer will give me a call and say, would you go to the house with me? And I've done that, that before. Um, so there's many things that we do, but I'd like to think of myself as uh, the community pastor. Um, Everybody has their own congregations, their own churches, their own houses, worship their own faith. But uh, when I get out of that car, I'm not representing uh, the church I pastor. I'm not proselytizing at all. I'm God's representative on the scene. And I'm there to do whatever I can uh, to make sure that your needs are met. So that's basically in a nutshell about what a police chaplain uh, does. I'm certified uh, through the International Conference of Police Chaplains. Uh, in fact, we, uh, last year we had the National Chaplains Conference here in Lexington. We had chaplains from all over the world here. I was sitting down at the same table with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police Chaplain, 
with the Department of Immigration chaplain, uh, a chaplain uh, from Africa, and I were sitting at the same table. So this is not just something that's done in the United States, it's done all over the world. And there's not just police chaplains, there's fire chaplains and emergency service chaplains, there's military chaplains, there's hospital chaplains. And, and the main thing that those chaplains do is just to make sure that we're present. And we're present when you need somebody to be present there to help you out when you don't know where to turn, um, you don't know um, what to do next. We're sort of that calmness in an emergency situation to help you get through that situation. So I, I, I hope that gives you a little bit of information. Uh, in fact, I brought business cards here and my, uh, if I'll set them on that table if anybody wants to take one of my cards. Um, if you're aware of a situation or a family or something that you think needs some help uh, in Grant County, feel free to give me a call and I'll try to uh, help locate the resources in Grant County that they, they may need. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So. We have questions. Yo, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so could you tell us a story I'd ask? Oh, yes. You know, like, so um, without revealing names, of course, everything's confidential, but can you tell a story about maybe a time in recently when it stands out in your mind that you were able to help? Well, um, one of the things recently we had a autistic child that we had gone missing and we were trying to find and uh, fortunately we found him I think it took an hour or two hours to locate him but we found him and that's one of the things chaplains do is we're also idea guys so one of the things that I'm trying to pitch to the sheriff's office in Grant County has anybody ever heard of something called Project Lifesaver well Project Lifesaver is a program uh, for uh, children on the autism spectrum for older adults that may have dementia or Alzheimer's that walk away and become missing. And what this Project Lifesaver is, it's a wristband, sort of like, uh, what's the new thing that people wear? Uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, a Fitbit, about that size. Or you can put it on the ankle. And if somebody should become missing, uh, the sheriff's office would have a tracking unit where we could go to where the person became missing at, and we can track them up to six or seven miles away and track that bracelet. And the average time in locating somebody who's missing has been five to six minutes, maximum ten, uh, if they still have the bracelet on. And to date this year around the United States, Project Lifesaver has saved over 50 people. So it's something that I would like to see in Grant County. And uh, uh, anybody that maybe comes into Grant County that has maybe one of these bracelets while, you know, while they're visiting us at the Ark or something like that, if they should become missing, we can help find them as well. Is it for autism or is it dementia also? It's, it's, well, it's used for folks on the autism spectrum, dementia, Alzheimer, okay. somebody that may walk away. There and especially somebody that may be nonverbal. Yeah, there was a lady in Ohio recently right. that they looked for for a week. Mm -hmm. It was during a storm and they found her deceased, mm -hmm. like in a, in a yeah. ravine. Or well, something. recently uh, in Eminence, there was a young man that drowned, an autistic okay. uh, young man, seven years old, that drowned. So it's something that, you know, hopefully we, we've pitched and hopefully we can try to find the money uh, to get this in Grant County. How I heard about it, it's used in uh, McCracken County. And the thing about this system, which is so wonderful, is uh, often uh, kids that are on the autism spectrum that are nonverbal, they will not approach somebody in a uniform or a badge or these blue lights or red lights. They sort of freak them out. How they work this in McCracken County they located a child in the middle of a cornfield who was hiding. And this, it's, see, this is, you know, if we can, you know, if it's a system that's never used, it's paid for itself. But if we use it, it pays for itself even more. So, you know, these are some of the ideas that we helped come up with uh, in the county. So, you know, it's where the sheriff goes, oh, it's a chaplain on the phone again. So, you know, ideas. So we, uh, we just try to make things better for everybody. and. And uh, we're a community pastor, we're a community resource, and as I like to tell Sheriff Maines, we're your added value service, because my chapel services do not cost Grant County a dime. So. So you volunteer. Yes. Hundred yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. And how much time do you spend doing this? Well, first of all, the county pays for my certifications, okay. because it costs so much to be recertified every year as a police chaplain. 
but it depends ride numerous times during a week and it's like anything else in law enforcement it could be not much or a lot it just depends on the night or the or the day but I do try to get out with the deputies and try to meet all the guys and uh, one of the things that I do for I call them I call them my cop flock and what I do for my cop flock is I still have uh, officers that I have a relationship in Benton and Carrollton here in Grant County and I send them all a daily devotional every morning as they start their shifts something a little positive to begin their their day on and they know that I might have left their town but I haven't left them and will never ever leave them so uh, it gives you a little taste of what we do. Does anybody else have any other questions? Well I have a question but I'm not going to answer. I'll try. Um, in April the Sheriff's Department posted this post mm -hmm. and it was uh, in front of court. I'm concerned about it and I think everyone in this room should be concerned about it. I'll let you read it there. And if you have anything to say about it I'd love to hear it, if not, I understand that also. Well, you know, I, I don't know anything about this, okay. but I, I would say that if you do have any concerns, call Sheriff Maines, okay. uh, personal, and he can, he, can, he can answer those questions for you. So okay. the last thing I would ever try to do would try to be speak for somebody else. But do you want this back? Yes, sir. Yeah, but if you uh, call the Sheriff's office and ask for Sheriff Maines, he'll be happy to discuss that with you. Well, So, um, the training that you do for this, you received some law enforcement training. You're, you, you've obviously done complete training to be passed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, is it what, what part of the law enforcement? Well, in the uh, uh, chaplain's training, first of all, there's different counseling on the law enforcement spectrum end, and there's also working with those that are dealing with post traumatic stress disorder from situations they've been in and also how to handle ourselves and how to work with the public when we're on scene at a location. The most important part is understanding our role. And that is, I don't carry a gun, I have a badge just for identification as I'm part of the team, but I'm not a police officer, never intend to be, I'm a police chaplain, and there's a big difference. And having to understand my role and other roles is crucial to be a police chaplain. So, yeah. You'll never see a, a blue light or red light in my car. I get there when I get there, as safe as I can when I get there. So, yeah. so. any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Just out of curiosity, mm -hmm. I understand that, that your position is new, mm -hmm. and I was wondering, did they did the sheriff's office provide you with any training on no, I contacted them. I knew that I was going to pastor a church in Dry Ridge, so I called the sheriff and I said, "You have a chaplain." And they said no, and I said, I'm a certified police chaplain. Would you like my services? And it started from there, and uh, uh, Chuck Dills called me in and interviewed me and uh, showed me around, and we talked a little bit about what his hopes and dreams for the chaplain program were. And uh, one of the things that uh, I'm working on are there are police chaplains for Dry Ridge Fire, uh, Williamstown's Fire, uh, and, and other agencies and we're going to be working together so if one of us is out of town that there's a chaplain available uh, if the need should arise so working together as a team yeah, yeah. so yeah you're very welcome All right. yes sir How long have you been doing this? Or at, in Dry Ridge? oh and oh in Dry Ridge I have been here since I've uh, been in Grant County nine months so I'm still new I haven't even let the dust settle on me I did it for four years in Carrollton, and I did it previously before that in Benton. Uh, I'm also the father of a law enforcement officer in another state. So one of the things that I try to do is I know that uh, I, I can't be there for my son. So I try to be there for, for these other law enforcement men and women to make sure that they know that there's somebody who, who cares about them and, and is here to help. So. All right. Anything else? Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Tim. We really appreciate you coming and representing the police department. We wish that uh, our other law enforcement uh, branches in Grant County could have joined us, and, and uh, sadly, they weren't able to come tonight. So, so anyway, thank you so much for what you provided. Yeah, and we're going to go ahead and dismiss this part of our meeting, take about a 10-minute break, and then we'll begin the business meeting for the Grant County Democrats. Thank you.